Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Y'all awake? <laughs> we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. Let me get my glasses. Welcome to Gar. We're we're so happy you're here. And um, um, Treasurer's Office reached out to us because uh, I think they have a soft spot in their heart for realtors and and what we're going through. <laughs> Small. One. Large, large part of what they do is uh, taxes, you know, I mean, collecting taxes, making sure that everything gets to the right spot. But I want to take a minute and introduce our, uh, our treasurer, Madam Treasurer Nancy Beers, elected as the first Hispanic woman to serve as Bernalillo County Treasurer. Beers is in her second term and the eighth year overseeing investment policies and a $1 billion portfolio, that's with a B. It's a lot of money. <laughs> um, a longtime public servant, she previously worked for Human Services Department, General Services Department, and Albuquerque Public Schools. Nancy and her husband have been longtime residents in southeastern Albuquerque, where they've advocated to rename the area the International District. When I was first married, by the way, uh, Madam Treasurer, that's where my wife and I lived. Um, and it was... Uh, it was international then, and it's, it still is. The ID, uh, the ID remains, let's see, hold on, the international district. To re, okay, the International District, early 2000s, to reflect the diversity of their community. The ID remains the only community of interest having the name memorialized in the state, county, and city levels. Nancy earned her bachelor's of liberal studies from the University of Louisville. I said that right? Louisville? You're not bad. Okay. <laughs> but uh, without, without further ado, uh, welcome Nancy Bears. We're so proud to have you here. Thank you. Appreciate we're, we're it. So you know. Right. That's right. We're recording. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, you all. Um, it's, it's fantastic to be here. I've wanted to be here for a while. But we kind of went through some changes, didn't we, with COVID? Uh, and there was something about the building that happened. <laughs> and uh, we just couldn't seem to, to get our schedules together. But uh, we're happy to be here in March. And um, as uh, the senator said, and pardon me, I still call him senator, uh, my time at the state uh, that was just drilled into us. So uh, he's, he's always going to be a senator to me. Um, but it's, it's wonderful to be here, as I say. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to introduce the staff that I brought. Um, and everybody who brought a laptop, go ahead and open it up, and, and we'll get started. Um, over here on my left, probably your right, is my compliance officer, Sydney Duran. Over on the right is my deputy treasurer, Ryan Travelstead. Okay, and they're out in the audience because we do, we did want to encourage you to use your laptop and follow along and drive on your computer with what we're going to show you. So they'll be here to help and come over and uh, when you raise your hand, if you're having any trouble of following along on our presentation slides, so you actually get a feel of what it's like to go through some of these uh, informational facts for you. The other one I brought is my steadfast administrative assistant lead, Tiffany Stevens. Next is, next slide, the agenda. Um, you can see there primarily uh, what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, our new online services. Um, I don't know if you all remember. Well, I'll quiz you. Who remembers the two things that happened after Bernalillo County moved to its new building at Alvarado Square. Just shout it out, one or two of them. The hack, 
Thank you. The cybersecurity. We got hacked and we went, uh oh, we got to do some things. Now, what's good about our system is that mostly with the paying online is what people were worried about. Um, so that was already covered with our merchant services. But we realized the rest of it was not. And so we closed down for a few days uh, and had to really, you know, recreate everything from that cyber attack. It turned out um, it was a ransomware. Uh, we did not pay any ransom. Uh, we were able to work it out with many government entities around us, like the FBI and others, uh, to help us uh, not have to pay that ransom. And we had a great recovery system as well. So that led us to really start thinking, what's on our website that could infect a user that's coming into our system? And we didn't, of course, we wanted to prevent that. You know, we don't want you to get on our website and then get a virus and then shut you down or even GAR, the rest of GAR. So we said, it's time to go on that cloud, that wonderful cloud that we have. Everybody talks about it for the past two or three years. Let's go to the cloud. Uh, so we did. We went to the cloud. And that's why we're here to show you those online changes that we made and how you maneuver this new stuff. And I call it stuff because I'm highly technical. All right. And uh, then we have some other things about the property searches that are online as well as our online payment. <clears throat> we'll get into some other issues that we have in the office, not issues, but other programs that you can take advantage of and that you can tell your clients to take advantage of. Take a sip. We have room for Q&A as well. Go ahead. So we're missing a slide. Okay, I forgot to tell you, before we start, take out, your, take out your cell phones, mute or vibrate them, please. Sometimes I put them on vibrate, but it still distracts me because I, I have to look at it. Who's calling? What's going on? So mute it if you can. All right, you're all familiar with the room. Uh, I am, or the building, I am not, so you know where the restrooms are. I don't know, I'll probably just check in with you to see if you want a bathroom break or anything like that. Uh, otherwise, just feel free to get up and take care of yourself. Um, if you are in the back and you're not hearing me very well, or if you're having trouble seeing the screen, feel free to move forward. Um, I don't bite. I don't think Tiffany does either. So it's fine for you to come on down and uh, be up front with us. Am I holding the mic close enough for you all? Because sometimes it drops and then I don't get it. So feel free to just, you know, Nancy, lift your mic, something like that. We're very informal. Just tell us what you need. Um, let's see whether, did I forget anything? That's right. You have Sid and Ryan as your helpers. If you're going along on your computer, on your laptop with us, if you have any uh, issues with your laptop or going through some of the screens, just raise your hand and one of them will come over and uh, walk you through some stuff. We find that's the easiest way uh, because everybody has a different system on their laptop usually. Um, we do recommend that you use Chrome, Google, uh, when you use our website. So if you have that, please um, click into that. All right, I think we're ready to go. All right, 
the first thing that you should know, uh, it's the same with the old way, is our website is the most convenient way to, have, to find out questions about our office. It's at your convenience 24-7, 365 days a year. You can go in there and if you're up at night at 2 o'clock in the morning like I am sometimes and you just, you know, I need to get to sleep, what can I do? Read a boring website. It would be great. <laughs> You'll be asleep in no time. But, uh, so it is, it is the best way. And, you know, we're only open 8 to 5 at the office. Uh, we do have 40 employees at the office, but sometimes, you know, you have to be put on hold on the phone or uh, I'm the one that responds to the treasurer's emails uh, and I'm out on a conference. I just got back uh, this weekend from two back-to-back -back conferences. So, um, you know, sometimes there's delays. The website is the best way to go. And you can see there I put down the address burnco.gov slash treasurer. That's the quickest way if you want to put that into your Google. Okay, there's really two ways to get into our website. If you want to go in the Bernalillo County way, that's the first website address there, uh, the www.burnco.gov. Um, if you're really a an advanced user, you know you don't have to use the www, just say burnco.gov, uh, and things will just come right up for you. The second way is to go directly into my website. Uh, that gets a little bit more complicated because you're just targeting the treasurer's website. So we say use that W, I mean the HTTPS, that S means it's a secure site with the colon and the two slash marks. And then go www.burnco.gov, another slash. And it does actually make a difference, whether it's a forward slash or a backward slash. Treasurer and then another slash at the end. And that will get you to my website. Let's go through the Bernalillo County website first. Is that the one that's up? That is the one that's up. And it brings you to the Bernalillo County site as a whole. Has anybody got on that before? Yeah? Okay. So where do you go to find me? Government, because I'm an elected official, right? So I'm in government. So you click on government, and up comes on the left all the elected officials. Now, I don't particularly like being the last, because of course, as an elected official, I think I'm the best. But just to make some resemblance of order on a website, we went alphabetically. So it started with the districts, and then with the elected officials, started with the assessor, an A. We like the assessor, right? Yes, you awake? Come on, yes, all right, good, speak up. We're being filmed, we need to hear you. Uh, but go on down and you see the T, the treasurer, and that's me. So click on the treasurer, and up you will come to my home website. This is what you enter if you enter that HTTPS website. You'll come to my home page directly. You know it's me because... Yep, that's me. Uh, so there's the website. You'll notice a couple of things about it. First, if you really are just in a hurry, you want to be direct, uh, and most of us are, right, during the day where you're showing homes, you've got things to do, uh, the family's calling, all that kind of stuff, is you can go on the left-hand side, and if you get familiar with this left-hand side, you'll know where to go directly. If not, then 
This is the latest activity that's happened for me that I've put a press release out. Well, that one's a day late. <laughs> that's where I mentioned that uh, with our collections and everything, we got, as of December 31st, as you heard the senator say, uh, we hit a billion dollars. And that is a record for Bernalillo County. It's a record for the state. No other county treasurer can say that. So we're really proud to, yes, we're Bernalillo County. Um, but on this screen, the other thing is we've got so much you have to go over here to what I call the elevator button, because I'm a highly trained technical person. And remember over here on this side, you have that where you put your cursor and you bring it down and your page goes up. Okay, that's your elevator button. And it'll show you the rest of the screen that's down here, which is what we're gonna talk about. And you'll see two big, green buttons. If you're on your laptop there, are you there yet? Yes? Good. So I often say, go to the green buttons. You'll know what I'm talking about. The bottom of my homepage. The first one on the left is search property um, or property tax search, however you want to say it. It's listed both ways. And then this one of course, is my favorite, pay your property taxes. And it's got the little ribbon on it that says pay. So we really wanted to make a distinction there, but that's what we've got. Anybody used those before? Yes, we're kind of shy with the arms, but okay. We're there, good, yes, I've used it, Nancy, good. So we're mostly going to be talking about this one, because this is the one that's really changed. If you remember, I don't know, maybe Rose and I can remember, what the old one looked like. The old one was, oh, so wonderful and perfect. It had a blue sky in the background and the wonderful New Mexico white clouds. It's like, oh, here we are. Well, when you go to the cloud, and you have a vendor that you bought the module from, it's kind of cut and dry. So we kind of boosted it with the green and then the little red ribbon there for pay. So it looks a little bit different. Let's go ahead and get started. Come on in, sit down up front. Grab a, is there still some croissants left? Some coffee? Okay. So, up just a sidebar, when you get to know this website really well, you won't even have to scroll down for the green buttons because on the left, remember, are some little shortcut buttons. And we do. We have that search tax records right here for you. If you don't want to scroll down to the button, you can go down here and find it under the S's because it's alphabetical search tax records. Either way gets you to the same place. Okay? We're good up to this point? Cool. So you're going to click on that search tax records over there and you get to our new screen for searching taxes, property taxes, properties in general. And you might recognize it. Anybody kind of recognize that setup with the blue bar? Yeah, the assessor had it before we did, which is how we knew it worked. And went, yeah, let's do that. Let's buy that module for us. So it looks very similar to the assessors. And now that we have it, We've coordinated, and it does look very similar. You just have to look at the top on your blue bar, because it says property tax search. That's how you know you're in the treasurer's side. If it says, what do you think the assessor says? 
Right. Valuation search. Okay, because you're looking for values, property values, or your tax calculations that the assessor provides. Okay, so there's the other thing is that these bars at the top, those that wording does take you places. So that if you're in here doing a search and you're finished, you've already looked it up, you don't have to click back. You just go up to the top and go, oh yeah, I need that form. Let me go back and get that form. And that takes you automatically back to my page for forms, for another property tax search, or if you need to pay your taxes, okay, I looked it up, I know how much to pay. You don't have to go back into my home page to find that green button. You can just click on that, it takes you right there. So everything's really connected. However, and that's really good, most of us under 40 people, well, not us, not me, um, like that feature, okay? But as we get older and we gray a little bit, we kind of go, where, where am I on this page? <laughs> and you kind of go, oh, no. And that's why we say, if you get lost in all of this, give us a call um, because we'll walk you through it. But again, everything's connected. You usually find your way uh, of some place that you say, oh yeah, I'm back at the home page because I see those green buttons. And then you, you know, okay, I'll go, I'll go and do this. So the other things that you're going to see, let's go to the next page. Yeah, because there's two ways that you can do a search. Shout them out for me. What's the top way? Yep, that's, that's the second way, the parcel ID. The address. What are the two things you need for an address? <laughs> that's right. Somebody will send you, here's my P.O. box. Mm, that won't help me. Somebody will say, oh, on my tax bill, here's my bill code. I won't help you. So that's the two things you need. And the other thing is, remember this is a database. So if you put in too much information, it kind of slows down the thinking. So we give you little notes on the screen about for the address, you don't have to put the full number, street address, but it's good that you do. Where it really comes into play is the street name. Now, we do live in New Mexico, so we tend to have really long street names. We have, I, I was looking up some things yesterday for, for some clients, Beverly Hills Avenue Northeast. We all have those kind of long things, don't we? Uh, San Vicente Avenue Southeast. Uh, Basket Weaver Avenue Northwest. Are we going to put that all in the street? No, ma'am, we're not. The least amount that you can do to make the database pull it up is the best. Otherwise, you're going to bog down that database going, Oh, let's see, Basket Weaver Avenue, what? And you, you don't have time to waste to see that little blue thing spinning, right? So just put in the first name of the street, if you can, Basket, and it'll come up. Even if you put B-A-S-K, it'll come up. Now, it won't come up just to that specific address, but it'll come up and say, this is everything that came up. Is that what you want, one of those? You go, yeah, that's what I wanted. Well, today, unfortunately, we have to pick on somebody. We're going to pick on Colin and Brianna. So you'll be seeing them during this presentation. We apologize if you're in the audience or you're on the video. If you are Colin or, or Brianna, we just picked you randomly, just a random one. So you would click on either the parcel ID or their address, 
to get to their individual record. Okay? I'm going to stop here because these lights are really hot. I'm going to take off my jacket. Think of if you have any questions, just shout them out. The question was, when did we change this format? I want to say it was last August, or was it earlier? Might have been earlier, second half of last year. Yeah, so last summer we did it, and we kind of played around with it and heard some feedback uh, and made some changes. But then it's, it's live, so we've, we've gone live. But I will tell you, if you do have any suggestions, feel free to let us know. Email me at treasures at burnco.gov. Because again, this is some stuff we have. We have rules that we can play by and make changes. Some changes we can't. Sir. Security, by far. The other thing, I can tell you a funny story. Uh, the funny story is we also found out that the vendor that we had used to write the program for the former online stuff, we found out were um, some Eastern European um, computer folks, and they had been suspected of doing some other things with Russia, and we went, hmm, not good. So we were already rewriting it uh, for our internal computer programmers, we're already rewriting it to replace the system, and that had already been done. What we had lacked was taking it away and putting it in the cloud for that extra security. We were counting on just the Bernalillo County infrastructure security to make it happen. But when we had the cyber attack, we, we snapped and went, mm -mm, no, we've got to move to the cloud. This information, even though it's public information, you can see you can do a lot with it. And that was my concern, was the security. Good question. Anything else before we move on? All right. So let's click on Colin and Brianna. So when you click on them, it defaults to the basic information of the property. And this is the same way it was on the old system. So you get the general information first. Now remember there was a little list of reports that you could get. We still have that up here, but they're named differently. They're named differently because it's pulling from our database versus us having written it and specializing it for our needs. So again, it's pulling from the database. It's not anything that we uh, said, program it this way. So again, it's kind of an off-the-shelf program that the vendor has. So as you know from the first screen, what it tells you, it tells you about the property owner. It gives you the description. It talks to you about the property classifications residential, tax district, those are important. And then on the bottom, if there is a mortgage, we have mortgage information. But I'm going to qualify that information by saying this is not a person's mortgage number. It's our internal number for that mortgage company. 
And even it gets even further because it says loan care. And most of the time it's not a mortgage. It's their escrow provider. Because mortgage companies deal with a lot of different servicers of their mortgages. Uh, their title companies sometimes will do escrow for them. But they kind of farm that out. Okay, so um, be careful with this. It's, it's not, what can I say? I don't want to say it's not real, because it is real. But it's not their actual loan number that's on there. It's our company number for this company. Because we get a lot of electronic payments from them, from um, escrow servicers. So we have a whole Excel sheet on when we get that money, how it feeds into our system and pays. Okay. Some people will also say, yeah, go ahead. You might ask my question. Go ahead. Our what? I didn't hear you. No, we don't deal with real estate contracts in here. Good question, though, because that's what you'd be interested in. Right. Yes, but we'd still have it under a mortgage. It wouldn't distinguish, really, if it's a con real estate contract or a mortgage. You're paying me, um, and, you ha and that company has a number with us that's just identifying that. Sometimes. It also means we haven't gotten that information. If you're just buy a new home, we probably won't have that information until the next year. Right? So it could sit blank for a year, or it could have the previous owner's information until we get the update. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Yes, ma'am. I am so glad you asked that question because I was going to bring it up. Because what happens April 1st? Taxes. Wrong. Taxes will not be due. April 1st, it is April Fool's Day, and I don't know why they send it out April 1st. It's state law. What comes out April 1st? What? The assessors. And what do we call the assessor's information? Notice of value, NOV. You should get that. It's, and interestingly enough, tax, property taxes are one of the few laws in state statute that actually have dates. And so the assessor and I are required to meet those deadlines. If not, we have to get permission from the state property tax division to miss it and why and what are we doing? Okay, so when I say April 1st, that's when it's due to be mailed out. That's the assessor because taxes run on a calendar year, January 1st to December 31st. Um, January 1st, the assessor kicks in with, first of all, identifying Colin and Brianna. Are they still the owners of that property January 1st? And where's their mailing address? All that information. Then they start going, okay, we got to do the value. So sometimes it's your time to go out and look at the house. There's also now these little drones that we have that can go see your property, make the assessment, do all that stuff by April 1st to get out that notice of value. Now, after you get that notice of value, what happens? Do you throw it away or put it in the file? Please don't. Pull out last year's and look at it. What's the change? 
How much did I go up? If you're a resident, you can only, you're mandated by state law, again, to only go up 3%. Do the math. Did you go up 3%? Did you go up 2%? Yes, sir. Right, because there's cents involved, and they do round up a little bit. But it doesn't always, but just know that that's the cap. I've had it at 2.5% at my house. I've had it jump to 3. I've had it come back down to one8 No, this was before I was treasurer. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And that goes back, it's a great question, because again, what did I say in the beginning? What is the property tax year? When does it start? January 1st. Anything I do, anything the assessor does, is based on January 1st. Who owned it, and what was the assessed value? And that's kind of really hard to understand. And the best way I can say is, I'm sorry, it's state law. It all starts January 1st. Well, I think we've got a new assessor. I think the new assessor brought a new way of doing things. So I'm not here to speak on his behalf. But that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Sometimes people call and say, well, I never got a tax bill. And when I looked on your website, it's now this amount. And I went, yeah, that's because you know you bought a house. And you didn't buy it at the tax rate that was listed, because that was listed for 2022. You bought it, and that's the real rub with people is between the assessor and real estate is that there's fair market value, there's assessed value. Okay, and the assessed value is all dictated by state law. Yes, ma'am. And I'm going to back off for a minute, Rose, and say I can't really answer for them how they do their job. I don't know those rules. I am not an assessor. So I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> right. Yep. Because it's a new value, right? Yeah. So um, that's where I always say it's best to call assessor staff, assessor's office, than mine. Because I'm just dealing with taxes. I can talk all day about mill levy rates and things like that, um, but I can't talk about how they assessed your property. We've got two going. I don't know who had their hands up. Go ahead. Maximum. Mm -hmm. The state legislature, because that is in state law. So if you want it changed, talk to your legislator. Again and again. Sir. The tax, or the, I'm sorry, the cap is on the assessed value. When you buy or sell a home, what is the value based on? Sale price, but market price is what I always say. What will the market bear? 
Um, Rose knows me very well. Um, I bought my house in 1999. Is what's on my tax bill as an assessed value, and let's just say only going up 3% a year, going to be the same value I can get now for my home on the market? No. It's going to be more. Oh, thank you. I'm, let's, let's move. No, I don't want to move. So the 3% cap, I'm sorry to interrupt, the 3% cap in theory will never continue to rise as much as your market rate. Hopefully. In an economy that goes upside down, eh, we might talk. But that's the theory of that state law and that 3% cap, is that you'll be always earning and accruing more value on your house than you are paying taxes with that 3% cap. Now, do I know if that's been proven or not in the theories? No, but we have state economists and other folks that, that say, yeah, that's how it works. And I go, okay, I'm gonna collect taxes over here. <laughs> So that's, that's how, it, how it works. Right. Right, and that's just for taxes, and that's just for the assessment, that I, I'm with you. I don't either because I thought you were supposed to do that. You were supposed to run the tax calculations for people buying. So I'm always shocked that you all are shocked. Correct. Right. You used, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we did invite mortgage companies and title companies to this. So we, we did want them to hear the conversation. But um, I've been trying to get in there and talk to them, too, because we're all, we're all dealing with the same things, right? So let's, let's really learn how, what makes it best for our clients. Thank you. That's a good, good topic. Yes. Yes, and, and Rose made that point. It's residential only. It's not non-residential.
Well, I'm not jumping in on that conversation. Well, and to be an assessor, many of those people have, you know, certifications to be an assessor at three different levels. Don't look at me for those. I don't have them. I don't. So I, I shouldn't really ethically speak about it. So I always back off. So if you get a client um, that says, well, the treasurer told me to go to the assessor, try and back me up on that <laughs> if you can, because, um, yeah, it's complicated. I know one side of the house, which is collecting taxes and, and being the banker for the county with the investments. I don't know the assessment side. Now, saying that, I will tell you if you go to other states, if you, because uh, states, property taxes and assessments are driven by state legislators. So every state is different. We're kind of the same, but in these kind of situations that make a big difference, um, state law is different in every 50 states. So that's why it's good that you say, who makes these laws? How do I, what's this 3% cap? Yeah, it is Santa Fe and your legislators. Okay, so realize that, realize too when you have a client that is moving from out of state into New Mexico, they're not going to know a thing about New Mexico law. You have um, commercial entities that think if they get our delinquent tax roll and pay the, ta the delinquent taxes, that they now have a stake in that property and can sell it. That is not true in New Mexico. I can pay your taxes. Rose, would you pay my taxes, please? I'm due on second half. She could pay my, yeah, right away, she'll do that. Anybody can pay anybody's taxes in New Mexico. It doesn't mean, excuse me, film, a damn thing. It just means you gave me money and I'm crediting it to that property, period. There's no ownership, there's nothing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and I changed screen, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I liked your well, Let me get through this screen, and we'll talk about it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of move on, because we do have a time limit. Um, but I can keep going forever, so if you <laughs> want to stay, that's fine, but I know we have a limit. We can still use the room, but, you know, I, I think they said we're here till 10.30 or 11, so I, I want to honor that for the sake of your time. So when you go to the next chart, which is tax calculation, this is what comes up, and that's that little part that's in your tax bill um, that will show you what your assessment is, what's your taxable value. That's the other thing people get tripped up on. They go, well, my assessed value was 300000 Why is my taxable value only this? Again, it's state law. It's one-third of your assessed value is your taxable value. So that's a pretty good deal. And that feeds into the 3% cap. We're never taxing the full, full shebang of your assessed value. It's only the taxable value, which is one third. Okay, again, state law kicks in. And I'm, I'm going to keep going this way and I'll get back to these entities here. And then the tax rate. What's the percentage that this entity over here 
is giving for taxes. All of these entities are given taxing authority. And that's, that is a, a state word, taxing authority. We have given them permission to tax us, collect taxes so they can do their business, public business, on our behalf. Okay? If you don't like it, go see your state legislator. Now, the tax rate is, is based in mills, and mills is a very old English way of coming up with what's good for the Commonwealth. We're not a Commonwealth. There's only about four states that are true Commonwealths by their constitution. But we say what's good for all the residents. Okay, that's the Commonwealth. Now, when you look at that tax rate, you go, Nancy, how did you figure that out? And I go, you know, I didn't. That's the best way to do it in government, right? I didn't do it, they did. And again, who do you think has the budget for every single entity in the state? Who do you think has that? Legislature, no. They just make laws. And there's three parts to government. So legislature's out, you got two left. Just shout them out, I'll tell you. The executive. So we have a Department of Finance administration. You have to turn in your annual budget to, we call them DFA because we love acronyms, you know. And they go, aha, they've turned in our budget. It's been approved by their board or whoever is that entity overseeing them. And now I can figure out how much they need from all their income sources, what do I need to figure out property taxes for them? How much do they need in their budget that the taxes will fulfill to make them whole for that year? We're going through it tomorrow, actually, uh, telling our commission what our budget request is for. So you can tell we do it really far in advance. We're projecting what our budget is. Okay, it's been kind of hard under COVID, but we're getting better. <laughs> Supply chain's coming around. So they're the ones that figure this. And remember that complicated calendar I told you about that starts in January and ends in December? DFA sends this to all those overseeing entities, like our board of commissioners, September 1st. So they have it, they recognize it, they don't really approve it. They just recognize, yeah, we got it, and this is what will apply. Okay, so I do that, that happens in September. All right? So you can see we're getting closer to that November date for taxes, right? We're really struggling here, going, oh no. Um, this taxable value comes over the next month from the assessor. October 1st, I get the tax roll file from the assessor. So I, if there's any sales, uh, new builds, new properties, things like that, from January 1st through, generally it's September, August, September, it'll come through on that file to me. If anything happens after that, which of course you don't just sit home and go, I'm not gonna sell a house today. Nancy said it's October 1st. Okay, October, November, December, I'm just gonna sit at home then. I'm not selling anything, not making any money. No, of course not. We'll catch up with a new file. But I have to have at least a pretty good picture to be able to send off a tax bill. But there's always going to be times where somebody sold their house or somebody renovated and they've got a new assessment. But, you know, things happen. Life happens. And we're going to catch that up after January 1st. 
but right now I need to know what's your best guess that you have on records for the mill levy rate and the assessed rate. So there's always going to be timing differences is what I'm telling you. So if you see it, something like this, when you pull it up and you go, that does not make sense. Oh, yeah, I remember what Nancy said. I did sell that house on Halloween. She probably doesn't have that information yet. Or the new buyer. And the tax bill is going to get sent to the old owner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, we good with that? And again, this is still Colin and Brianna that we're picking on. Okay, the next screen that you can go to is your balance due. And let me show you two things. There's two balance dues up there. One says balance due. One says balance due dot PDF. PDF means it's in a different format that is printable, and it looks much more like a tax bill. And it even has a coupon on the back to pay. So that's our backup tax bill if you will. My dog ate my tax bill. I don't know how much to pay. Go to that .pdf one. But let's go through this screen real fast. Um, again, you have the basic information up there of your parcel ID and, and Brianna and Colin. It will pull automatically the 10-year tax roll. You know about the 10-year tax roll, right? That's what I can collect taxes on, are those 10 years. It's also the 10 years that the assessor shows for values. So you can go back 10 years. After the 10th year, so I've got 2014 there. If you wanted something from 2013 or 2010 or anything earlier, you have to email me or you can do an IPRA that um, is, you know, the, the information you can get. Because in our system and because of state law, it says that 10th year, when it falls off, two things happen from our perspective. One is it falls off and it's considered paid from a property tax perspective. So I can no longer collect. If they owe it, not anymore. It fell off. And secondly, the, if there's any changes in the system for that record, it may or may not be affected or updated. Because again, it gets pulled off the system, off to a little corner. You're already past the 10 years. You go sit over here. I have that information up until that point. But if anything new came in, I may or may not have it if you ask for it. So we always put that qualifier on it. So you only have 10 years. And that's what you see right there. Now you look at the columns on it, and you can see that it has pretty much the same information your tax bill does. So what's the year? What taxes did, taxes, excuse me, did we charge? Is there any interest or penalty? Were they late on getting their payment in? And I have to charge penalty and interest. And then there's fees. We do have fees, and we're going to talk about those fees. And then how much did they pay? And you'll see those are all negative numbers because we subtract that from their account, right, to get to the balance at the end. So that's the one section. Are What's that? No, because there's other laws about collections that kick in. Yeah. And we're going to talk about those too. But from the perspective of this screen, you don't, you're not going to see it. Okay? Just the 10 years. The next is it breaks it out by the current year. You have first half and second half. If you do owe any money, it gets rolled into that first half. So you'll see that looking kind of weird. 
And you go, oh yeah, they didn't pay last, you know, they, they were off by $75. So that rolled into the first half of the next year. And then if they don't pay that, it rolls into the second half. So there's your first half and second half, what's current. Then we have this wonderful program called the monthly payment program. And that's for the folks that don't have a mortgage or don't have an escrow. So they're paying taxes on their own. Usually we see this uh, because it is an elderly person that's already paid off their mortgage. And so now they have the realization that, oh, well, I paid off my mortgage, but taxes are forever. I've got to pay my taxes. And we offered them, I think it was 12 years ago, uh, in the legislature, we advocated for, you know, there shouldn't just be two times that you pay your taxes, especially for people that are paying their taxes on their own. So we, we being treasurers, county treasurers, 33 of us, put together this program, and actually it was led by Bernalillo County, to say, you know, we can spread it out. So we spread it out over 10 months. And it's a lot easier for somebody on a fixed income to do that. No, ma'am, it's a free program. We even send you coupons, like a mortgage company would, because that's what people are used to, right? And we said, we want to make it easy for you to remember. So we're going to send you a stack of, you know, nine tax bills that you put, or tax payments that you put in with your check and mail it or you can go online however you want to pay it. So it's a really nifty program and it's free. Four letters. Free. Yes, sir? Hold on. Well, that's, that's the operations back end. You need to come work for me if you're asking that question. I love that. Um, because again, the program really starts June through April. No, yes, June through April. Sid's the expert on this one. And we don't have the NOV yet, do we? What if they protested? And we don't know what the final value is. So we take last year's taxes divided by nine. Yes, it's easier divided by 10. But we divided by nine. That's the payment you'll pay for nine months. That 10th month, We'll figure out, oh, we got your tax amount now, your assessed value, we'll go back and make it good. What's the balance that you owe on that 10th month? Good question though. Did I do it right, Sid? Okay. <laughs> He's trained me well. Yes, sir, I forgot. No, you can only, we'd really like for you to enroll by May because your payments start in June if you want to get a good 10 years. It's coming up, but we will take it through August. But it will mean you might not get your full 10 months in and your amount will be higher. No fees, no nothing. It's just Sid and his shop. It really was. It really was a good deal. Um, the other thing that the state law says, it has to be approved by your board of commissioners. And we did take it to our board um, that 12 years ago. So, but I'll make a little caveat, hold on, Russ, and say, we'll take taxes anytime. Come on, let's be real. I'm open every Monday through Friday. If you want to pay me, or if Rose is going to come down and pay my taxes on my house, come down anytime, Rose. Go ahead, what's your question? You do, but what's on the chart that you're going to hit? Penalty and interest. If you are late, if you miss that last due date, which is December 10th and May 10th, if it isn't postmarked by then, just like the IRS, if you don't get it in by April 15th, you know, you're getting whacked for not having paid your taxes. We kind of do the same thing, except we're government. We're not here to make a profit. So penalties and interest are both 1% of the total that you owe. Interest keeps going on forever and ever. Penalties is only for the first five months that you're late. 
and it's always late, we always run it, the day after the 10th of each month. So if you get it in by the 10th, you're good. If you get it in on the 11th, I'm whacking you. Go ahead. Right. Correct. And I'll tell you why. Yes. Well, our system, our online payment system, is not real time. And my feeling is, and I talked with Ryan about it is, I really don't want it to be because we run into some issues with real-time payments. It's the same reason why, um, what, what, what's the big one, PayPal, isn't real-time either. They have to do some things in the background for you. They reach out electronically to your bank. Oh, are you on this bank that's been in bankruptcy? Oh, is your account good? Does it have money in it? Okay, we'll let this payment go through. If not, it kicks back. So there's a couple things that it does in the background, and it generally takes about two days from your payment to get downloaded to our online. So you're right. It's not real time. That's a little bit too much risk for us to take because we're government. We want to be safe and secure first and foremost. So, so yeah, you'll see that. Um, and I, I also wanted to say, what, what, what else? There's something else on this screen that I wanted to say. Yeah, there's the penalty and interest charged after the 10th. And I did say it. Just like the IRS, they look at your postmarks on your envelopes. If it doesn't say April 15th, you're late. If you don't say December 10th or May 10th, which is your last day to pay on your two halves, then you're late. Ryan. Not that I know of. <laughs> so. No, I cannot. In state law, it says, there's, there's two words, <laughs> shall. Shall means I have to do it. If, you, if it says, oh, the treasurer may charge penalty in, in interest, the may means I may, if I'm in a good mood, or I may not, if I'm in a bad mood. No, really. Um, so that's when you look at the state law. Because uh, I had lots of people come in the first six months I got into office. The dog ate it, and I couldn't, I don't, can you please waive penalty and interest? And I said, not unless you want to visit me in jail. Yes, sir. Yes, all of our systems, when we, and that's part of purchasing, that's part of our responsibility to be good uh, public officials for you, is that we do all that tiny little stuff for you. Of course, we're the largest county as far as the number of parcels, and I have the largest staff, 40 people. So I want to do things right for you, so that means I have to get the right software. I have to have the right written procedures for Sid to follow. Um, we have to do all of that on your behalf. Because what do I say over here on my, ba on my banner? 
What do I say in green? Your money matters. You're not just paying taxes because it's fun, you like my haircut, you think I'm a cool person. Heck no. This is your money that you've earned. And I better be doing right by you, or you better vote me out quick. Right? I am a strong, firm believer in that. Elected officials are supposed to be elected to do a job. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I do. I do. Because I was shocked that people would freely, I didn't have to come to anybody's house, knock on the door, twist your arm, get your checkbook out, and send me tax money. I was dumbfounded. I thought, people are just wonderful. They really are. And that's a credit to you all and to our system that we know taxes are important. We also know property taxes are more important because they are all local. I didn't talk about the entities up there. Can we go back? Um, because these are all local entities doing something for the public, right? So these are taxes that affect you the most. So you get a chance to vote on some of them, some of them you don't, but you take that seriously and show up and vote. So I need to show up, right? That's my arrangement with you. That's my agreement. So looking at these tax entities real fast, those tax entities that you see on your bill vary from bill to bill because, can you think of why? Because of the address, the tax district. <clears throat> Rose, know, Rose and I live in the Southeast Heights. We know we're in the city limits. We are going to pay both city and county taxes. The reverse is not true. If you live outside of the city, you're not going to be charged city taxes. Now, if you live in Tejadas, the village of Tejadas, you're going to get charged the village of Tejadas taxes. So it's all based on location, that tax, tax district that you see on your tax bill. Now, this one said APS. What's interesting about APS is that long time, and I was actually working APS when we had the whole charter school issue brought up, and APS said, I'm pretending to be APS. You know, you're going to be taking money from us, from the district, for your school. We would like to direct that for you. Because there's certain things you have to do for that money. So, in the beginning, a lot of the money was filtered through APS, and they gave it to the schools. Okay? Um, because at that time, there was a big discussion between public charter schools versus private charter schools. Does anybody remember that? Who has the gray hair that remembers that? <laughs> oh, I don't. I just, I don't see it, so I have to rely on you to tell me it's gray. Um, so, you know, there were some different things along the way with those charter schools. So we send the money, because we don't want to send it out. Well, we actually do. 
now we do. We used to send it just out to APS and then they distributed it. But again, we upgraded our systems because we're doing our due diligence and the whole discussion between private and public charter schools got ironed out. Okay, so now we do automatic deposits to send out to those charter schools. Something like 75 or something like that. Um, and then they go pick it up from an ACH on our website. Um, just It's faster. You don't need to be sending checks and involving the post office and the dog ate it or it got lost or whatever. It just is direct deposited to them. But interestingly, we found out in one of our tax delays, we had to wait for a school district to vote. Does anybody remember that and which school district it was? Moriarty Edgewood. We have a few, Sid can tell me a few properties in Edgewood, Moriarty Edgewood, and the elections were not clear. They had to have a recount twice. Because the other thing is, Moriarty Edgewood is in three counties. Santa Fe, <laughs> you're going to look at me and go, oh no. Santa Fe, Torrance, and Bernalillo. And all three counties had to be counted twice by those county clerks. It was so close. And just a little sidebar on civics. It came down to nine votes on how that mill levy um, election went. It was a geo bond for Moriarty. So if you don't think your vote's not important, it's nine votes that passed that geo bond amongst three counties. So really interesting how things get done. But we couldn't send out a tax bill. We didn't know the tax mill levy rate, did we, for those properties. So your tax bill was delayed that year because we had to wait for it. Now the good thing was we guessed correctly. So we had already set up, okay, we think it's going to be this. And we had, I think we had already printed the bills and said we think it's going to go that way. And it did. So we just dropped those right away and people got their tax bills. But it, it was tough. I mean, we're a county that only has those two school districts. There's other counties, and you can pick on Sandoval. They have over 10 school districts that they have to account for. So we're blessed. Two school districts, I'm good with that. Um, the other thing you can see is, uh, oh, it's not on there. But there's a thing. Well, yeah, it is. The, the conservancy districts. Here's, here's one of them, a conservancy district, um, that have their own boundaries, just like the school districts do. They don't care about what county they're in. They have their own boards. They have their own districts, things like that. So um, you'll see these entities vary. Um, that have the different boundaries. But the ones that are covering the entire county are always there. So you see the state, you see the county, you see CNM and UNMH, the hospital, AMAFCA may or may not, because that's mostly just in the city, you know, uh, Edgewood Soil District, they have their own. So you'll see different things. And you can tell your clients that. Okay. The next one is, oh yeah, I'm sorry, go back. I didn't get to it. Yeah, we tell you about your due dates. And then here we have the parcel ID barcode. You could probably care less about it. We need it for identifying that payment and that parcel when you pay. Next slide. So the PDF that I talked about is the most, looks like the most of your tax bill. Again, the tax bill is printed by a printer. 
It's one unique bill. We do not recreate it. So we have this for you, though. So go to that .pdf, and it'll tell you mostly what's on your tax bill. And the best thing is, it gives you this bottom half payment coupon to make payment. So if you have a client that says, I lost my tax bill, or I never got it, it didn't forward my address, whatever, you can use this, have them cut it off, send it in, or if they want to pay online. Okay. Again, same information, your 10 years of taxes, how they paid, going across. Um, we break it out into the most current, first half, second half. Colin and Brianna have already paid first half, which we would expect, right? By December 10th, they paid their first half. They're now on second half. I've gotten a lot of calls now. They go, well, I paid, but it's showing that I owe. Well, yeah, because we've got the second installment, the second half up there. You only paid the first half. They go, oh, yeah, I forgot. So they're always surprised by that. Here is where we put the assessor's exemptions. And I hope you all know about exemptions. Those are so important uh, for taxpayers. It helps save their taxes. And you say, well, how do you do that, Nancy? Well, all of these are value exemptions. So remember, we talked about the assessor and how they figure out taxable value. These exemptions come off of that taxable value. You have the head of household. You have two different veterans taxes uh, or exemptions. I'm sorry. One is if you're just a veteran. And I, I shouldn't say just because that's a big deal. But the other one is if you're 100% disabled veteran due to your service. Then you get a full 100% exemption from your primary residential property. Now, if you had a vacation home in Rio Doso, too bad. You can only take the house <laughs> in Albuquerque that you live in as your primary residence. If that veteran passes, it will go to their widow or widower as long as they do not remarry. Okay. You also have a handicapped. Uh, and old age, over 65, I'd fit that bill, Rose. So. <laughs> but it has a dollar amount attached to it. Uh, I believe it's 42000 and some odd in change. 65. Really? Yeah, if you're 65 and over, you, you will qualify for that. And it's that also accompanied with your low income of, for, what did I say, 42000 Your gross income from your state taxes. We, do, we went back in about three years ago because it used to be just a flat amount. And we said, that doesn't make sense. Can you attach it yearly to the CPI, the Consumer Price Index? So it changes every year. You do have to call the assessor's office for that number or go on their website. No, they'll do it for you, the age, the age 66, because you're not going to get younger. So, you have to verify every, verify your income every year because they want to make sure, you know, you didn't, I don't know, who's checking the lottery today? Aren't we, aren't we looking for a million something dollars? So yeah, you just have to verify that amount. Yes, sir. Right, because it's really uh, an older, low income and or disabled. You can also qualify for head of household. You can also qualify for a veteran if you're a veteran. So you don't just have to pick one exemption. If any of them apply, you get them all. Except if you've got the 100% disabled as a veteran due to service, 100% uh, is 100%, right? 
Don't worry about the head of household or the other ones. Yes. Yes. It's elderly and and low income. The Alvarado Square, Bernalillo County building, 415 Silver, right across the street from P&M. But you don't have to. Go to the assessor's website, click on their forms, and you'll find all the exemptions listed. And all of ours are in English and Spanish, as are theirs. And you can, um, we're trying to get all of ours fillable online. Um, we're not quite there yet, but I think the assessor is. So you can fill it out online. If not, print it off, fax it in, email it in, however you want to do it. Okay, we need to hurry up. Are we ready? Let's go at Trojan speed. All right. So our next one, uh, pay your taxes. Whoops, our next one is pay your taxes. Okay. Um, the next one is tax estimate. Um, if you do get on our website, we feel like, okay, we'll just connect you to the assessor side of it. Because it is in state law, again, that the assessor provides the estimate, the tax calculator. We have it here for your convenience, so you don't have to go to another website, but it'll take you over to them. Because you'll see at the top bar, what does it say? Assessor's website. We didn't want to be responsible for it. It was nice. We had a couple of realtors uh, call us and say it wasn't working. And we said, what do you mean it's not working? And then we said, you know, do we really want to maintain it? We're not required to by state law. Do we want to be on the hook for it? And I went, no, I don't have to be. I don't want to be. It's really the assessor's area of expertise. So it just takes you right over to them. And then you can go on their assessor forms and fill out you know, that exemption, whatever you need to fill out. So it's a nice connection there. And the next one is, OK, payment, the second green button with the red ribbon. Okay, so this is where you go when you want to pay. And when you click on that, it goes, it leaves Bernalillo County site and goes to our vendor site, um, which is the point and pay site. And you go, how do I know that? It says it right here for you. It's on their system, their security. And that's why when we had the cyber attack, we said you can still go online. You don't have to come down here because we didn't, we didn't capture it, but up there where it is on your laptops, um, you'll see it says pay DCI. That is their website. So it's switched over to their security and their cloud. And of course, again, we did our due diligence and that's why we wanted point and pay. They had the best system, the best security. So you've got two sides to this. One is it says, OK, you have to go search and find out the property you're going to pay on. Rose is going to go to mine, right? She's paying my taxes. The other one is over here. And it's very confusing because people think, oh, i got to sign in. No, you don't. Um, that is an option for you. If you are a realtor and you're looking at a couple of properties and you want to keep that in a folder for yourself or in an account, that's fine. If you're also a property owner that has 10, 15 properties, you don't want to have to search 10 or 15 times for your property, right? It'd be nice to open an account, have your 10 there, set it up for your 10, and go pay. So we gave you options. But don't think you have to do an account. You can just do a one-time payment by clicking on the black box, the little house, and coming up with your property. When you do the search, it's very similar to the other ones, but with more choices. Because again, 
anybody can pay on anybody's property. So we gave you the options of searching by parcel ID, bill number. Remember I mentioned bill number on the other one? And I said, ah, it's not important. It may be here if you're paying. And then we gave you the address. So you have to click here on how you're going to search. And then, whoops. Hold on. And then put in what you're searching for. Is it the parcel ID number? Is it the bill number? Is it the street address? And then click on search. And then comes that screen. Here's the screen. Again, we're still picking up on, picking on Colin and Brianna, right? And up it comes, and again, point and pay gets updated by us, so they know what we know pretty closely within a day or two. And there's your payments. What do you want to pay? Well, remember, Colin and Brianna have already paid first half. We saw that, so it's zero. So they're probably going to be paying second half. So it automatically says, oh, you want to pay what you owe, which is the second half. But what if you're in the monthly plan? No, you're going to pay what we tell you to pay on those coupons, right? Because we spread it out over 10 payments. So we have other. Or maybe you just got an inheritance and you just want to pay early. Oh, good, because remember, I work Monday through Friday, every day, all year long. I'll take your money any day you want to give it to me. And so you won the lottery, or your Aunt Mary died and gave you some money. Well, let's pay off our taxes right now, honey. I know that's how you all think. And so you put that in the other payment amount. And then it adds it to your cart, which is your payment cart. All right? And then follow the directions from there. Um, we couldn't actually pay and get a screenshot of that. Uh, Rose said, no, I'm not paying for her. I got disappointed and said, fine, it's not going in the PowerPoint. So there you go. Um, so let's stop here. I know we've gone over. We can go into some more fun stuff. But we've covered primarily the objective I wanted. So do you have any questions? Do you want to move on? Do you want a bathroom break? What do you want? It's up to you. It's, it's, it's you know, your presentation. What would you like? Uh-oh, Rose is leaving. She's going to go pay my taxes. We only have about 10 or 15 minutes. Just finish. Thank you. Let's go. Let me have a slurp of coffee. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I know. I know. I'm working now. Gotcha. See ya. So let's talk about those forms and some of the programs that we have in the treasurer's office. Um, because we do provide public service. So we have things like, and again, it's under the forms button. We have things like the automatic payment plan. Um, if you are paying your taxes, you don't have an escrow company or anything, and you just don't write checks anymore, or you, know, you don't remember very well anymore, if you're on the monthly payment plan and you don't want to write checks, we will do an automatic withdrawal from your bank account free. So it's an automatic payment. You have to have a form to fill it out because you have to send us a check of you know, your account with the routing number and the account number on the bottom. The other thing you can do is you can go to your bank and say, hey, do you have an automatic payment that for my taxes? They may or may not. And number two, they may or may not charge you for it. 
And that's why we say we're free. What's better than free? Okay, so we have the automatic bill pay that you can do. So anybody can do it as long as they're not paying, having their taxes paid by an escrow company. There, yeah. No, this is a pull. This is a pull from your bank. Yeah. Uh, there's your monthly property tax agreement. Because you are paying for it in a different way than the usual twice, twice a year, we make you sign an agreement so you know you're responsible for 10 payments and what those payments are going to be. Okay? You know on our side we're going to send you the, the coupons, get you set up, blah, blah, blah. But we want an agreement on that and the way to undo and get out of that payment is again in writing as well. You have to email us, send me a letter, and put it in writing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I do accept a credit card payment. It's just not an automatic payment. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, that question I thought was just for the automatic pay. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, I'll get to that in probably the next slide. The other one is the tax refund. <clears throat> and you go, Nancy, why are we refunding taxes? And I'll say, I was surprised too. But when you buy a new home and you have to go through those mortgage paperworks, Sometimes you don't remember how they split out the payment of taxes that you agreed to with the, old, with the seller, right? And nobody's going to go through that big stack. I'm sorry. They don't. <laughs> you probably know that. But so they are double payment. They go, I don't know. I got the tax bill. I paid my first half. And then the mortgage company comes along and pays it. Because when they sell a house... That old escrow may or may not pay at that time. You think of the business model of, a, of an escrow? The business model is hold money and pay it when it's due. If it's not due till December 10th, I'm going to hold it in my bank account, earn a couple of pennies or dimes, and then I'll send the treasurer her money. So they're there to make money, not necessarily thinking, I better just pay it. Um, so you see a lot of new home homeowners get confused by that. Who's responsible for this half of the year's taxes? How did I make that arrangement when I bought my house? So you have refunds that, that get done. And we have a form for that. OK, let's keep going. Now, here's the monthly payment program. I've kind of already talked through that. So unless you have any questions, um, I just, there's, there's three points here on the bottom I wanted to cover. Just remember, if you have a client that is selling at their mother's home, you know, maybe you want to say, hey, how, do, how was she paying her taxes? Was she paying monthly? How was she paying? Because if she is and she's dead now, you have to write the treasurer and say, stop that. And also send me your executorship from the court so that I know you're the right one that's telling me that. Okay? The second one is for buyers. Here it is. Um, some people, when they buy a new house, have enough money from the sale that they don't do a mortgage. Um, and so they don't have an escrow company, and they're paying on their own. Again, get them into the mortgage, the monthly payment plan. Unless, I mean, just mention it to them. They know their finances and what they can or cannot do. Um, First-time homeowners, there you go. It's a little confusion on that, especially if they're from out of state. They don't know New Mexico tax law. And they're going, well, that's not how it was in California. Mm, no, nope. California's a different state. 
<laughs> Very different state. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, here's the monthly payment plan. And, and remember I said when you search on it, you'll see it here on your, your basic information screen. You'll see if they're on the monthly payment plan or not. So that's a good heads up for you. Okay. Now let's talk about this tax and payment history real fast because it got to this gentleman's question about, oh, in 10 years it falls off? Well, yeah. But if you're on, on schedule, oh no, this is the delinquent account one. Sorry. Can I do a normal one first? No, okay. So um, if you are delinquent, the tax law says that my office can collect up to three years worth of delinquent taxes. So if you've been late three years in a row, uh, it still stays in my office. And I will tell you, I have some really dynamic women that will be calling you, sending you, and they will come by and visit you to get that money. Um, <clears throat> previously, the treasurer's office didn't really do that. They didn't see the value in it. Um, when I came in, I said, well, I have to treat everybody fairly and equally. If I want you to pay your taxes every year on time, why would I let this guy be off? I'm sorry, I'm just picking on you. And there's fair and equitable taxes. And that's in state law, one of the concepts of taxes, is that they're fair and they're equitable. I would not be doing my job if I let people slack. Don't bother to call them, just, eh, you know. They're having a hard time, I heard. Heard it in the news. I, I won't, we won't call them. No, that's not fair. That's not equitable. Okay, so we do have a great delinquent staff that will come knock on your door or send you a letter. And you'll know it for you as realtors because you'll pull up the screen and you'll start to see interest and penalty applied, right? Now, after three years, what happens is the state takes over. I run a file that says it's three years and over, that they owe taxes. Here you go, state, property tax division. It's your turn to collect. And it's all in state law that the three-year mark, we turn it over. They're responsible for collecting. And not only do they get to collect and keep, well, no, they give us the tax amount, but they keep the penalty and interest as well as, whoa, where? Oh, okay. They'll put in that $125 fee for collecting because they have to run the title, all kinds of different stuff that they do for their due diligence. And it also means that if they aren't able to collect, put you on a payment schedule or something like that, or you just stop paying for whatever reason, you can have your property auctioned for property taxes. And it's the state that does that. Now, it's kind of odd because we allow the state to use our offices uh, and our commission room to do that auction. So a lot of people think, oh, it's that bad treasurer. She's auctioning off my property. No, I'm just following state law and letting the state do it. Um, they are required once a year in every county to have an auction. So you, you will see that advertised. You'll see it on our website as well because we have a, a link to that on the left-hand side of my website. You can also sign up with them uh, to get notice of auctions in any county that you want. Uh, so that's, that's up to you. But that's how you'll know when you look at our online information. Yes, ma'am. 
It's on my website. On the left-hand side, it says State Property Division. I think I'm not. I'm not recalling it, but it's it's on towards the bottom because it's an S, right? It's alphabetical, so it's an S for State. Yeah, and it does a direct link into their website. Yes, ma'am. I just said every year they are required once a year it was only waived during covid yeah so they have to go to every county 33 counties once a year to have an auction it's all on how they can it's you can sign up for it as well that's why it's nice for a sign up um, we've had it many different dates all the way from march to september They do, yeah. Public notice. So it's all required advertisement, but you have to look for it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's a good way to sign up for an account. Absolutely, to see if they've paid to create an account, but that's just pay. That's just point and pay. We don't have it on our system. Yeah. They also recently, um, we have exemptions for judges. Because there's, there's been violence against judges and people looking them up through tax information. All right, what's the next slide? I think we're done. No? Uh oh, we're not. Here we go, talking about how to pay. You asked about credit cards. And number one, pay online. You can use debit card, credit card, or an electronic check. And I tell you, that's wonderful. Now, because you're using a credit card, debit card, or a check, um, there are what's called convenience fees. Those are the fees that Visa, MasterCard, American Express charges point and pay to be able to do this. We don't even see them. They don't even hit our bank. They go automatically to point and pay to pay. The electronic check is even cheaper than postage. Um, it's 40, 45 or 49 cents, 45. And now with postage going up, that's a deal, okay? So you can do it that way. What's that? Through snail mail. Well, no, you're doing it electronically. So, yeah, I get it. So option two is you can mail in your check, money order, you know, and it's just not cash. Do not mail me cash. Post office doesn't like it. It doesn't go through that machine very well. Yes, ma'am. They go to the assessor. For Oh, on the form it doesn't. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I was like, huh, what? Yes, you can. Um, some of it though, like the veterans, there's paperwork uh, from the military that you do have to bring in. So they do ask that that's in person. You can for the head of household, you can fax it in because they don't need any other information. But on some of the stuff they do, the, uh, the elderly with the low income, yeah, you have to bring in your state income tax. So I would give them a call, jump out of the form, and they have you know, their contact information on their site uh, for the assessor, and, and ask them. Or just drop them an, uh, an email, assessor at burnco.com.gov, and say, you know, can I send this in the mail? Can I fax it to you? It's not on your form. Tell them it's not on their form and they'll get it fixed. Yes. Ma 
It's a, yes, a tax freeze. Tax freeze or value freeze? It's a value freeze. Yeah. Because what it does, it's not an exemption off of your value. It freezes your assessed value so that you'll always have that same number for the equation of figuring your taxes. You're welcome. No, thanks for catching me on that. I forgot. You have to call the assessor and read that form because it tells you what the income level is, I believe, and then what you have to do. And remember, it's, just, it's the assessor side, so I... I barely get along with, you know, knowing all that information. If you do email it to me, though, I will forward it to their, their group. But I will also tell you it's their responsibility. They'll be in touch with you. Good. Um, so when you mail us your, your payment, um, there's the address, the P.O. Box. You will notice that this is the long P.O. Box, 27800. We do have another P.O. Box, 627. You can send it anywhere uh, of those two, but this one was the original lockbox P.O. So most of the time we expect payments to come through there. We now have lockbox internally in our system. We bought some software um, several years ago, and um, they had the capability, and we said, okay, we're ready. Let's try and do it in-house. So we did, we're doing it in-house, but we're keeping that P.O. box. It's on our printed envelopes. So we didn't see any reason to change it. Then we have this, the drop-offs. Um, these are great for um, people that worry about the mail. <laughs> will it take two days or will it take 10? Well, you can drop it off. Um, the drop-off boxes, I know the, the one that we left at the old Civic Plaza uh, at City Hall, 5th and Marquette, uh, we check every day. During tax season, we check these about every week. Uh, I have the Village of Tejeda's box because I live the closest. So, you know, it's date night for me and my husband when we go pick up tax bills, and then we go to Burger Boy. It's a great place if you've never been. But the other ones are in the community centers uh, that have high volume. It is a locked and secure steel-plated box. So you're, nobody's going to get into that. Um, we also had this year, and we're going to finish it out this second half, with Rio Grande Credit Union. They were very kind in, in, with us um, to take and accept payments. They don't give receipts. You just hand them your taxes in an envelope. They will get them to us. But that is stopping as of May this year. Um, yeah, they've gone electronic. All the other banks have gone electronic, and they're like, oh, we're not going to take paper payments. Are you kidding? And we went, okay. So that has all stopped now. Anything and in person, don't forget, come visit me. It's lonely there in that new building. And it's on the first floor. Uh, the great thing about it is we do have all the heavy visited uh, offices on the first floor. So you've got the clerk's office, you've got the assessor's, and you've got the treasurer's office that takes cash there. Um, but we also take everything else. Debit cards, credit cards uh, can all be done um, at our place. And do come visit us because we've got a really great building. We did a great renovation job. Also up here you see like caddy corner from our building is a paved lot, paved and fenced lot. And that's our free customer service parking. And it has signs that says Bernalillo County. It's got handicap spaces there. So it's very nice. And um, I, I hope you like it. So it's not too far away. And just come on in. Um, we have security 24-7 uh, because it's our, our new building. Um, and also what happens with that is you do have to sign in. 
uh, for it and get a little badge. Primarily that's for if anything was to happen in the building, a fire drill, bomb threats, you know how it is nowadays. Um, we wanna make sure that if you ha are in the building, we know you're in the building and we'll make sure that you get safely out if we have to do anything in the building. So that's why we do it. We're not, we don't turn this over to the police or the FBI if you come in our building. Um, it's just for that security or if there was any threats that happened. Okay, here's our important dates. We probably should have put this first um, because again, remember I said we start January 1st and we go through December. Um, ours really kicks in, I, I pulled it up at April 1st with the NOV, the Notice of Value, and that, that's kind of when your clients and my clients know about property taxes. They go, oh, what's this? It's a Notice of Value. Um, and you can talk to them about that. And then everything else I've already mentioned, um, but it does kind of incorporate some of the assessors' due dates, like April 1st, they're going to get their notice of value, but you also know that you have 30 days to protest that value. If you don't think it's the right value, you compared it to last year, and it's like, wow, this is really way off. You only have 30 days to file, and it is in writing, to file with the assessor that you need to talk to somebody about this. You don't think it's right. And they'll get in touch with you and set up an appointment to talk about it. You'll, you'll be able to get your paperwork together on why you think it's not the right amount. Okay, so, um, and generally it's, it goes on until about August that they're doing protests. Sometimes it's earlier. But uh, I remember one year it was, they went through August on their protests. But then you've got other things. What happens in April? April 10th is your first due date for second half of taxes. So people are like, what's this April thing? There's too much going on. I can't remember it. Um, and then May 10th comes along, and that's your final due date for second half. Uh, June 10th, we do send out delinquent notices. So after the May 10th, we do our due diligence, wrap it all up, who's paid, who hasn't. And if you haven't paid and you owe us some money, we'll send out a postcard for you that says, uh-oh, you didn't pay. Maybe it did get lost in the mail. That happens. It really does. Um, <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> um, so, or maybe... You know, you went online and you did an e-check, but it never got pulled out of your account. Give us a call and we'll, go, we'll look it up and we'll go, oh, they couldn't find, they said your account had closed. They couldn't find your account number. And, and you go, oh, you're right. I had, you know, somebody hack me and I closed all my accounts. Oh, I should have written you on the other checking account. Things like that happen, and we'll know, okay? Um, June 30th is when I have to report to the state who's on that third year that I need to send it to them and say, it's your turn to start collecting. November 1st, that's when your tax bills go out. Now, if the printer gets done early, I'll try and mail it out early. But if not, I have November 1st. Give it a few days to get through the mail, right? And um, just, just so you know that every property owner will get a tax bill. That is in state law that they do. Even if it's a rental, even if it's somebody else's business, it's not going to who's using the building, it's going to who owns it. And if they've moved or it was going to their CPA, then you got to tell us it's moved. You tell the assessor because the assessor does that 
January 1st. Um, <clears throat> first half taxes are due November 10th, and then the last day to pay them without penalty is December 10th. Okay. There's some of our contact information, and I think you're going to have access to this PowerPoint. Um, so you'll have these. You don't have to scribble them down real fast. Um, or we're glad to send it to you. And that's it. Thank you all. You all had great questions. I really like that. Very interactive. I'll stay around. You're very welcome. I'll stay around for a while and just talk one-on-one -on -one with you if you have any questions or anything. Thank you all very much.